Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then let's um, Sorry, I have to not go to that. Okay. So, um, um, the final talk of this session is by Wojciech Michael Parma, and it's about a functional approach to Monte Carlo simulation for American options. Exactly. Thank you much, Rio. Uh, first of all, I, I hope you're having a, a nice time right now when you're joining the session. Uh, I hope this will also be uh, memorable for you and uh, you're going to learn something out of that. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so let's start. Uh, my name is Wojciech, and uh, if you're going to remember anything out of this session, I'll tell you one thing. Back home uh, in Copenhagen, uh, we believe that uh, we can right now do high performance computing using functional languages and actually use it for practical problems that we deal with in the industry. Let me walk you through my presentation and my arguments. This is a joint work with uh, Martin and Kospin, and uh, I'm a relative newcomer to, the, uh, to this community. So I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm, a, I'm doing a PhD at the University of Copenhagen in the Department of uh, Computer Science. And uh, I'm doing, a, so I'm a, more of an application guy. Uh, I do uh, high performance computational finance. So my uh, application domain is finance. And what we're trying to do is to accelerate some of the financial algorithms that, we, that are used in the markets and uh, investors in the whole world. It's a specific type of a project because it's a very uh, deep uh, and joint collaboration between academia and industry. So we actually are fitted with a lot of uh, feedback from the industry. Uh, I'm a senior, I'm at the same time, a senior research engineer uh, at, uh, at, the, at Syncorp in, in Copenhagen. And uh, I work with new technologies and uh, you know, this software that is used by many uh, investor uh, managers around the whole world. All right, uh, if I would come with an executive summary for you uh, here, I would say that we try to study uh, feasibility and performance efficiency of uh, expressing a practical, complex financial numerical algorithm and use uh, high level uh, data parallel functional constructs for that. Uh, we limited to a particular problem, which is a, a Monte Carlo simulation, but a specific one, where we actually have a least square regression used. And I will tell you more about it in a sec. Uh, we propose, so I'm a, I'm a member of a member, I, I like to say that, uh, I'm from a Futark camp uh, down in Copenhagen, uh, I'm accompanied here actually by Creator uh, Twelve sitting there in the corner and Fritz. Uh, so I'm not alone here. Uh, and in this project, we target GPUs. So if I would uh, count the results to this, uh, we actually managed uh, to achieve comparable performance to, uh, to a CUDA code, uh, which was designed and uh, implemented by CUDA and DDI CUDA engineers, so specialists. Uh, if it comes to a specific program, we uh, price, uh, we evaluate, so we try to find, approximate the price of a financial instrument, which in this case is a single, uh, simple put option with million simulation paths. I'll talk what is this in a sec, uh, on a decent uh, two years old GPU, and we do it in 20 milliseconds. Uh, we strongly believe this makes it a practical, uh, it's, it, it, it can be used in practice in everyday decision making. Uh, and at the same time, this code is high level enough so it can be understood and read and written and maintained by someone who is, a, is completely out of our uh, group of, of, of high performance uh, uh, engineers, high performance engineers. All right. So uh, I propose uh, such an agenda. Uh, now I go into more into details, try to come up with some highlights. Uh, what is exactly I did, what we do in this project, and uh, yeah, let's start. So, uh, do anybody here uh, in the audience uh, worked with uh, any financial codes? All right. Okay. So I have someone. Uh, who's gonna, like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through quickly. What is it, what is it we doing? 
Uh, we picked up a very common problem. Uh, you basically, uh, it's a business case where you basically need to find a price of any financial instrument. The problem is you have to base it on what is going on already in the market. And uh, it's, it's a widely traded uh, the, the derivative. It's used usually to so-called hedging uh, of the risks. So let's say you invest in something and it wants to de decrease the risk to, to the minimum. And options are specific contracts where you basically, in the future, you agree on some price or something. And at the time when it's realized, you will say, okay, uh, I take it, or you basically, or it uh, invalidates. And uh, the difference between American option and European option is that European option can be only exercised at that time. American option can be, you can take a decision whenever uh, it pays up for you. And uh, this particular problem of an American option pricing makes it interesting here and makes it uh, challenging because it's an optimization problem. So, uh, if I proceed, and this, this is the main networking problem actually that we're using. So, did anybody here uh, so, uh, use Monte Carlo simulation to solve any computational problem? Exactly, that's what I thought that you heard of. So, uh, what we're doing here is we try to approximate this, this value and uh, you pr probably know it's based on, a, on, on two laws. The one is the law of uh, large numbers, but basically uh, you're trying to find an integral and you try to uh, use as many as... Uh, if you're going to draw numbers from particular distribution and add up to it, you're going to get more and more, uh, let's say, true value. The other one is... Uh, is a um, central uh, limit theorem which basically says that it, it's gonna, like, it basically defines the convergence rate of this method. Uh, we have to reduce the, uh, the time used for this problem and we want, of course, the best, approximate, uh, the, the best accuracy one. And we're talking here about 100,000 tabs to 1 million tabs. So that's a, that's a big computational effort. And basically something that is well suited for GPUs because we, we can uh, push it to the limit. Alright, so uh, quickly, this mess here, uh, this is uh, 50 different uh, executions of, of, a, of, a, of a stochastic process. What is a stochastic process? Stochastic process is a model that tells you that this is a stock price. It is basically 50 different path invocations of how the randomly the price of the stock can go. And if you look here, you have 100 different time steps. What you do in American option is first, in this Monte Carlo based problem, you first generate those, this is a forward propagation, and then when you want to find the price of an option, and exercises on, on, a, on a optimal, in an optimal way, you have to basically first pick up which path, on which path of this particular uh, invocation uh, you, you're going to actually make money, you're going to get the premium, and then uh, save it and keep it for history, so going backwards. So we, actually, the normal Monte Carlo simulation would only do, do a forward pr propagation. What we're doing backwards is a regression problem an optimization problem where you basically have to find out the optimal choice. And what we're doing here is we're trying to regress through uh, using polynomials. We're talking about championship polynomials today. It could be very well used here. If I would show you a pseudocode for it, I uh, will not go through it. It's not that important. The, the, I, what I all, all want to say is that uh, this, this, this regression problem is a main bottleneck here. And efficiently implementing it, changing actually the, the whole approach to, to, to this algorithm makes it, uh, makes it fast. So it's not only that you think, okay, you can just put it naively on the, on the GPU, we did that, it didn't pay off, it, we were millions of times too, too slow. Uh, you have to also look at the code. And we, uh, we don't claim contribution for that, we found such an algorithm, it was in CUDA. It was blazing fast. Uh, what we're saying here is that you can look at that code, looking at it in full dark, and you can understand it. And you can actually follow uh, the, log the logic here in this pseudo code. Alright, uh, so what I was saying is that people are solving these problems now forever, because this is basically where the money is in the markets. And uh, what is, in our opinion, challenging is this expressibility. So you can really read this, and it makes it actually uh, inaccessible to some people. So, 
you always have to, if you want to maintain, if you want to add new products and so on, you have to every time call in your uh, software department, they have to understand the code and so on and so forth. And the, proper, uh, the second thing we want to have is that we are uh, architecture agnostic, so open seal style kind of thing. What we propose here then uh, is to use Footer, uh, a tool developed in Copenhagen and uh, a technology that we believe has some characteristics that is really, really well suited. Uh, we found out that are very well suited for this problem. So first of all, we can use uh, second order ARI combinators. So we can basically uh, think functionally about this problem. Uh, I'll go in a second to show you how this pseudocode that a second ago I showed you in pseudo, we, we show it in food art uh, nomenclature. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about this because this is, uh, I'm not working, in the, I'm, I'm, I'm a user of this technology. Uh, but I found uh, the support for regular nested data parallelism uh, a very core thing uh, to solve this problem fast. And uh, this that it compiles to CUDA or OpenCL uh, turned out also very valuable, of course, because uh, we address GPUs. Uh, and flattening co capabilities of the nested parallel, and parallel uh, constructs is something that we play. Did anybody of you hear about footer before? Okay, <laughs> great. All right, uh, why do we believe uh, footer uh, not excels but is well suited for this? Uh, Obsidian Accelerate, uh, they do not support arbitrary nested parallelism. Nestle doesn't, uh, doesn't have a GPU target. Nestle, which is the GPU target of Nestle, as I recall, uh, it's, uh, it's under development. And CL Nestle, which is a, yeah, this is a GPU target, sorry, uh, lacks the critical optimizations like fusion of functions and so on. So uh, these are these uh, data parallel functional uh, combinators we're using uh, heavily. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, more or less, and let's just switch to, 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 to how the algorithm is actually turned. So I, I um, we, um, we divided the code into three, uh, three uh, parts. And the, the, the crucial thing is that in the original code you would have two parts. You would generate forward propagate uh, those paths and then back, backward propagate in that main regression loop. In each time step, you try to find out the, the least square uh, solution to that regression problem. What you need to do is actually, what you want to do is to actually take a lot, uh, as much as those comp computation from the sequential loop, which is sequential intrinsically, you cannot do anything about it, uh, take as much of this uh, computation and take it out of the main loop and pre-compute it and actually compute those regressions uh, in parallel uh, before you even start uh, the regression. I will show you why in the result file. N stands for the number of paths, N stands for the time steps. Uh, as you can see, the loop construct is the sequential loop. Uh, path generation is basically uh, it's, it's, applying, uh, it's applying the stochastic process to, to the random, uh, random the number gen numbers generated. Uh, by run, uh, pseudo random number generator, then we uh, switch, uh, then we push it to the nor to the normal distribution, and then uh, basically for each path we compute the, the value of the process at that time step. Uh, the main regression loop it basically finds this uh, optimal stopping problem at each time step. So the values of your option of your option that you price at each time step. <coughs> So, uh, as I said, uh, what the problem is that we deal here. Uh, so we fix uh, we fix the basis function. So we use basis functions to do a regression. It's a, it's a, uh, here it's a three third degree monomial uh, polynomial, uh, monomial or a quadratic polynomial. So it's not Chebyshev, but we could equally well uh, use it. Uh, we just found out it's we don't need it. We don't need uh, such a function for this particular problem to actually uh, find this opti optimal uh, um, solution. Uh, how do you take out 
uh, how do you take out uh, this uh, um, let's say the computation out of the main loop? You do some uh, smart math, smart linear algebra, inform our SVD and QR decompositions, and uh, pseudo inverse transformations. Uh, we're dealing here with a very uh, slim uh, matrix, so, so accesses to memory are very important. And uh, there's a lot of thread diverges because on each time step uh, there might be another, a different set of uh, paths that are going inside uh, this computation. You have to always pick it up. And then every time you have to synchronize the, uh, the sequential loop. Uh, so we, yes, we basically follow a logarithm because our objective here is to compare and hopefully beat CUDA. All right, uh, this is the problem. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, we basically, this, these are the coefficients of the polynomial uh, that we try to um, that we try to solve with, uh, on the matrix of stock prices. And uh, p is our uh, payoff function. So basically, what, how much money we're gonna earn or lose on, on particular option. Uh, this is a high-level. Uh, main function of our of our code. This is how foot art looks like. This is where we call our uh, our main code. So basically, generate samples. These are two map maps. Uh, this is uh, the SVD preparation. It's another set of maps with a reduction, uh, and the regression loop are two maps uh, inside of a sequential loop. And in the end, we have a reduction. This is basically in Monte Carlo simulations like you have one million of paths and you want to find an average of that. Uh, all right, Pro let's proceed to the, to the examples uh, or the results or the benchmarks we did. So, uh, as I said, we are, this is where we claim that we do pricing something that is practical in 20 milliseconds. This is given in milliseconds. The reference code is CUDA, which is uh, still faster. This is not the case where I claim that we can do it faster. Uh, the V1 is code uh, compiled uh, with footer compiler to CUDA code. V2 is the same code compiled to OpenCL mm -hmm. while changing a, a, a flag. Uh, I have a slide uh, in my additional slides where I can tell you that we do not you, uh, draw, like it doesn't we cannot get the same approximation, for example, because we're using different random number generators. So, we, but we are very, very close. Uh, the something is true. Uh, what, what you say is true. You use another method. And uh, here, uh, for this problem, we can use uh, we can use uh, another method, another numerical method. Uh, we cannot use a closed form formula. So you cannot have a mathematical formula that will tell you. This is the price of this instrument, and this is why we need to use the numerical, uh, numerical uh, method to, 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 to solve this problem, because of this regression problem. Uh, but for this particular problem, we have only... So option always un, uh, has an underlying instrument. In this case, this is a stock. Uh, and here we have only one underlying. And uh, actually, for this problem, we can use different, uh, different methods. Here we have a binomial tree, so basically a tree that propagates probabilities. In future, you can you can think about it like a sort of a, a PDE uh, solver or a grid, uh, or in other words, uh, an ideal Monte Carlo simulation where you have exactly uh, control over all the probabilities. There, there's no it's deterministic. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, we match. Uh, sorry, the, this is OpenCL. This is CUDA. Is, it was around. With the CUDA uh, compile code, uh, we we get pretty close. Pretty close. It's still five milliseconds. But uh, let me proceed to the case where uh, we actually uh, beat CUDA, which is uh, interesting because this is code which is first done by, by specialists. Second of all, yeah, they have all the knowledge they should. And second of all, it's auto-generated. So uh, FootArc is smart enough to, uh, to, to compile to such code that is, that is actually faster than hand-tuned hand code. Uh, in cases where we have lots of parallelism on the level of paths, 
we actually beat CUDA. The, uh, CUDA is the, 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 more, the more transparent uh, code, the, 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 full, the full colors. And then you can see that uh, the main task in this algorithm is this main regression loop, which although we took out the pre-computation LCDs, which would just prolong on this, this blue part, uh, we still have a lot of work doing there because of the sequential loop. Why, uh, why this one is so big? Because uh, there is one drawback that we had, that we had to, uh, we couldn't force uh, foot our code because there is no way to, to express or tell it to the compiler. We basically every time uh, load stuff to the memory, so this is memory accesses, every time, every loop, it's, it's basically read and read in and read, read out of the, of the GPU memory, which uh, can be tweaked. Uh, but this is the main reason why, why we observe uh, basically decreasing in, in performance. Uh, basically, the, the performance changes uh, with, with the addition of time steps, which is, which is obvious. Uh, so here we have fixed the number of paths and we have no various number of uh, time steps. Uh, on this slide, uh, you, you can vividly see that uh, for the case where uh, we vary, so basically this, this case is where we basically, uh, this is the biggest case you can simulate. You can play only with two simulation parameters. You can add time steps uh, or, or take them out or increase the number or decrease the number of, of, the, of, uh, of paths. For huge numbers of paths, when you have problems on this level, we are much faster. Uh, and uh, usually, probably because uh, SVD part is, 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 is very, very small, the, the, CUDA cannot find, uh, the CUDA code cannot find out. But at some point, so all of this takes the same amount of memory. Uh, it's six, uh, 16 or 32, 32 gigabytes of memory on of that particular, uh, sorry, 16 gigabytes of memory on that particular uh, machine uh, I'm using. Uh, so this gives me um, this is the biggest uh, the biggest simulation uh, simulation case I can have. And basically, we observe the same thing, and this is uh, work in progress uh, to reduce this part because then, if we could, for every case, uh, match or be faster than CUDA, it basically proves the point that now uh, we can express our uh, financial codes and in, in, in functional high-level language and, and so, solve it fast and actually make people understand what, we, what we're doing. So, uh, if, you, if I would put it into, into words, uh, this is what we kind of found out and that's what, we, that's what, what are the contributions of this, of this work. Uh, we took the code that we know that is fast, uh, rewrote it in our technology uh, and actually found out that there are some cases where we actually are faster. At the same time, code is understandable, and uh, yeah, we also claim that we actually are the first to really detail, because I, you have to really understand the algorithm to the bone to, 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 to put it, to the, the algorithm, know the mathematics, the linear algebra and so on, to really uh, understand and run it fast. And uh, with this, I would like to conclude. And uh, I think I think there were a lot of details here. If there's any any detailed questions or not, I'm happy to answer them now if we have time. And and uh, later during the lunch or after last day. Yeah, during the day. Thank you very much. Questions? <laughs> yes. Is the source code available? Is the source code available? Uh, the which one? The CUDA code or no, the, no. the full time? The, the, like both implementations. Uh, okay. You're asking me because I'm working with industry and yeah, I, think yeah. it's, uh, I think it's yeah, it's, it's available. Uh, it's uh, actually I, I would say ninety percent of this code is actually in the article which uh, this presentation is based on. Uh, you can see it step by step because actually that's the contribution that you actually can suit it in a work in a in a working paper like in a, in a in a research paper and you can actually read it and even teach people like we we have so much uh, you know so much implementation kind of engineering 
uh, under the hood that you can actually understand. So yes, it is a number. Have you tried other derivatives? I mean, because America, and I, I think long staff shorts is viewed with some suspicion where I worked. Mm -hmm. And we, we would have used PDE methods to, to price American options. Yeah, I, I think I didn't mention it uh, during the presentation, but Monte Carlo simulations, when your uh, dimensionality grows, so you have a basket option running on five underlines, let's yeah. say five different... No, you could use PDX for that, no? Uh, up to the fourth dimension, right? Yeah. But you cannot come in no, the no. more... The, the, there's a basically a curse of dimensionality. So this is for... This is for you're one, you're just because... The line, just to <coughs> yes, exactly, just to match the CUDA code yeah. that we tried to, to beat. At some point, Monte Carlo simulations are the only way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for PDEs, as I said, uh, the, the true story comes from the, yeah, the PDEs, the lattice methods, and there are uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And Monte Carlo simulations are yeah, prohibited for these problems, for underlines of one and up to three, four. <coughs> do, do you have any experience with uh, the quantity level at long stash first? Like, for example, if you're computing CVA on an American option or an option on an option of this kind of uh, we plan to do that. Uh, this is this 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 is basically a building block. Now you can build a risk case over that, which is actually something that investment managers was there. Uh, hopefully, we, I'm gonna show it into my thesis. I have half a year more. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a risk case, which is basically exactly what you say. So at each time in future, you do this. So it's a nested simulation. What sim is sim this is uh, Monte Carlo simulation. That's how I understand what you mean. Are you talking about multi-level methods? Well, well, I mean it more like, for example, if, if, if you have an American option, mm -hmm. so you need to use long star short and use this regression-based approach to know on each path whether you're exercising yes. or not. But then you want to compute, let's say, CVA on this, yes. so you're going to do regression of the of the PV of, right. of the future uh, PV. To get by knowing on the right. point again text. Right? Yes. So, so that's what I mean by yes. Uh, Short answer is uh, I'm working on it. I want to have it. Uh, I I want to prove such a thing. I we're not working with CBA exactly. I'm working of uh, basically Monte Carlo simulation for uh, value at risk because uh, in Simcor we are more on the buy side. We're not a bank, so we're not we don't have our clients do not need this uh, to, to compute CBAs because they don't have you know. Uh, Counterparty problems where someone has to pay them uh, when they go bankrupt or something. But margins and so on. Sure. Um, I've got a question. So, yes. I think I missed that in your account. Um, you've had sequences of maps, but you, you mentioned that nested area parallelism is really important for you. So, where where the kind of, where's, where's the. Yes, so that's a parallel map inside of a you actually parallel have two, map, right? because you have a rectangular structure, basically it's right. a regular it's, structure, yeah. that's where you get the divergence, thread divergence. Yeah, yeah. and on each path is different. And does the Futa kind of rebalance the load, or does it just kind of... Uh, it, it, like it's, it's, it's actually goes in something in the middle. It's a, it's a, it's a moderate... Uh, what do, do you want to answer this? Like the, the moderate uh, parallelism? Actually, the orange. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, but uh, basically, uh, you, you uh, do enough sequential work so it makes sense, and the rest is flat. So it's something in the middle. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions? Hello. Hopefully, quick question. So you mentioned in the beginning that kind of the point of all this is like a, a feasibility study, right? Right. To so say, hey, you can use FP. Um, <clears throat> so I was wondering, sort of, how hard is it? So I mean, in terms of, I mean, you did some amount of performance optimizing to get these numbers. Mm -hmm. you know, can you compare that to what it's like to write the good directly? Does it seem the work will hit directly? I mean, I, I, so, yeah, so yeah, like the, the, the runtime and the accuracy are sort of good enough. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, okay, is the usability good? Like, or you know, do you have any? So how hard you're asking? In other words, how hard is to program Plutarch? 
Yeah, or, or in particular, like to diagnose, like, oh, hey, this thing is super slow, so we have to switch to long staff shorts. Yeah, but like, like the, the whole. How point, much time did it take to be the like? The whole oh, point like, <laughs> behind the uh, optimizing compiler is that you actually don't think about it anymore. You just agree that you're gonna use. You know, you have to express your problem in a in a very constrained language, functional mm. uh, constructs, uh, and that's basically there. You're you're already there. I, in an ideal world, of course, where you have an optimizing compiler that does all the other work. Where in CUDA, uh, not only you have to uh, understand the problem, so know already that's what, what you know, but then, of course, you know, okay, you have that many cores and uh, that much memory, and you have to program against that too. With Futark, uh, we claim that we can do it uh, automatically. So okay. the code for this, this is auto-generated CUDA. Or mm -hmm. open seal. So you can actually compare the constructs. So, so the one one. measures up to actually being a smart enough compiler for this. That's, I think that's the, the main uh, benefit of using technologies like Footer. Okay, thank you. Oh. Thank, thank you very much.